Awesome. Okay. Let's get this situated. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let us begin. Thank you everyone for being here at noon on a Wednesday. We appreciate um, you being here. Um, we'll start off with introductions before first. Thank you for coming to the application workshop. Today is March 22nd, 2023. My name is Anand Lalaria. I'm the operations coordinator for the science internship program. Um, and I have my colleagues here that will also introduce themselves. Take it away, Jamaica, and then Lindsay, and then I'll go last. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Jamaica Marshall, and I am the coordinator for Shadow the Scientist, which is a program under PREST, along with the Science Internship Program. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Lauver. I'm the um, Creating Equity in STEAM, or CREST, Associate Director. Thanks, Jamaica, and thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Anand. Uh, my name is Raja Gohatakurta. I'm a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at the University of California, Santa Cruz. I've been involved with the SIP program, uh, science internship uh, program, sorry, SIP, uh, for all 14 years of its existence, and it's going into its 15th year now. And um, uh, also very happy to be involved in the Shadow of the Scientists uh, program. Uh, we won't be talking about that in this call today we'll be really focusing on the science internship program but if there's time at the end and you have questions we could certainly answer questions about the other things that other outreach things that uh, programs that we run all right absolutely um, i'm gonna take it away perfect we'll do some quick housekeeping so this call will be recorded um please meet your microphone we've done our introductions there will be time for questions at the end but we'll switch up the format today and we'll do questions right after a brief intro on what to SIP is. In brief intro to what SIP is, and then we'll go over some program details as well. And then we'll go through the application, fill that out, fill out how to pay your application fee and go from there. So what is SIP? The Science Internship Program is an immersive 10 week summer program that engages high school students in STEAM research projects under the mentorship of University of California Santa Cruz researchers most primary mentors are PhD students, and high school students have the option of participating in person on the UCSC campus online or some combination of the two in hybrid mode. Uh, SIP is a fee-based program, but we have generous need-based scholarship programs to cover tuition, room, board, and possibly travel costs that we'll get into. So these are research projects that students will participate in. These are real research projects. They are not made up just for a uh, program sense or a program or to take part in over the summer. Um, categories of STEAM activities, open-ended research projects. So these are cutting edge research projects that are potentially publishable. No promises there, but these, they, as there are possibilities that um, doing research and having high school students take part in can lead into um, publishable. Uh, use cases. And they involve close mentoring by professional researchers that include trial and error and learning from productive failure. Mentors work with small groups of students. So the essence of SIP, critical thinking in the context of closely mentored, open-ended, real-world research projects. So this is great. That was just a brief intro into what SIP is. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them on the chat. Just uh, open to everyone so we can all see them. Uh, we have past participants in SIP that always do a great job um, answering questions in the chat, and we have a bunch of colleagues that also have information. Um, so, um, we can did I answer the question correctly about uh, uh, feature recognition? Raja, you muted yourself halfway. Through. Sorry, um, the question is about the teacher recommendation, recommendation right? uploads i think teachers recommend them directly not students. yes and as we go through the application you'll see but there are two options uh teacher applications are in part two or part three of the application and when you go on to the next part you can either send it out right then and there or you can wait till the end and when you complete your application then it'll go so you have two options Bethany, hi, I was wondering if the need-based scholarship covered living on campus from Sunday to Thursday or Monday to Thursday. 
different web pages on the website had varied answer, answers. I can answer so, that. It covers, point, uh, it really depends on the student's circumstances. If it's a student who um, has a home close to Santa Cruz in the Bay Area and they can easily go home for the weekends, we encourage them to do that and we cover um, the five uh, days, Monday through Friday. Uh, if it's a student who um, you know, lives far away and going home every weekend is not feasible, uh, it's something that uh, we, um, we allow seven days a week of housing. The default housing option available to you when you sign up is the five days a week, since most of our students in housing have homes close by. If you ask us for a specific code to waive that so that you can get seven nights a week of housing, um, we'll just ask you to justify. If your home address is far away, that's enough justification. But if you live close by, and but for, uh, for whatever reason, you cannot go home on the weekends, we will make exceptions. Yes. Yeah, a city around Berkeley is far enough away. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, many of our many of our interns come from the South Bay, and you know there's a shuttle service directly from there. But if you live as far north as San Francisco or Berkeley or Oakland, that's considered far enough away. Housing is open to all students that want to participate in person. Yeah, exactly. Anyone? Okay. Awesome. These so, are great questions. Great questions. Yes, great questions. Keep them coming. And feel free to uh, interrupt me anytime that I'm speaking. So go. Adam, I don't see the project info for my interested project. What project are you what interested in? What subject area? Yeah, what subject area did you have in mind, Adam? Because uh, projects are still coming in. So yes. it is indeed the case that certain projects, certain subject areas haven't been filled mm -hmm. in with projects yet. Uh, most of the things you see here, most of the 21 subjects that Anand is showing you, We'll have projects in them uh, by the time we are making placements. Um, so uh, you can tell us what your subject area is and can tell you how likely it is. Uh, Rachel has asked, um, uh, how many spots are available for interns at the, we think, again, this is evolving as more projects come in, there are more spots. Um, uh, so me talks, there are spots already. Uh, we just have to post them, um, um, microbiology, environmental toxicology. And him, uh, Heman, um, we expect to have over 300, perhaps close to 400 spots for interns. We don't know the exact number yet, depends on how many projects come in. Um, let's see. And then um, to ask, uh, answer your question, Rachel, if you're doing a hybrid, say two weeks online, eight weeks in person in Santa Cruz, uh, how are the online um, time activities structured? So we do several of the activities uh, completely online so that even in person, uh, folks can join those, but um, some are done in hybrid mode. And, uh, you know, not all activities are hybrid or online. Some are just in person. For example, students will go off and play tennis, or they'll play soccer in the field. Obviously, those are uh, impossible uh, for people to join either in hybrid or online mode. Um, but um, let's see. The other part of your question was, um, is it yes. uh, highly scheduled online session is it more like no they're, they're pretty well scheduled the online thing they're um yeah you're allowed to apply to um you apply to up to three subject areas you have to write two essays but up to um, and you can choose any number of projects um when you uh, pick you you choose subject areas you prioritize subject areas and then within those if there are particular projects that you like you can mention them in your essay yeah, we can explain our selection criteria, what background experience you're looking for. Look, we're looking for students. We're looking, the, the primary criterion we're looking for is social maturity. We're looking for students. We are, look, we are dealing with young people. We are dealing with uh, high school students. We're looking for people who have a good perspective on what open-ended research is like. We are looking for people who have expectations that they express in their essays that match the reality of what our program offers. You know, for example, our, um, our program, uh, what we promise is you're going to be immersed in a real research process, emphasis on process. You'll be immersed in a real, authentic research process. We don't promise that you'll have a discovery or product at the end of the summer. So if that's what you're looking for. We can't guarantee that, right? We, uh, research, a researcher's time is not measured in weeks, typically it's measured in months, years, decades. We can't promise that by 
August, you'll have a result or you'll have a discovery. Um, I don't know if that answers your question about uh, selection criteria. You know, we base it on essays, teacher recommendations mostly. Um, so, um, uh, hi, Anuaya. Uh, the soonest date we would announce acceptances would be, um, I think, April late 28th. April, uh, April 28th, April 24th. Yes. Do you remember? April 28th, that's the website. Is that the soonest? That'll be the first round, yes. Yes. If you need to know sooner, please get in touch with us. Yeah, just email us. I, if I could know sooner, that would be great. Because if he doesn't get in, I'm trying to plan a family trip for the summer. Of course, of course. Family trip to Santa Cruz, yes. Uh, I, I've written that, I've written <laughs> that down. No, for the summer. <laughs> and we'll get, yeah, we'll get in contact. Thank you so Reach much. You. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great questions. Keep it. Uh, keep them coming in the chat. We'll get into the application. So basically the way we apply to SIP, you go to the website, we'll add that to the chat. But this is our homepage. This is some information about the program. This is a timeline. So the application did open on March 31st. March 1st, it is open until the 31st. The application closes at 5 p.m. PDT. So please um, get your applications in by that time. And this is also the deadline for your teacher recommendations. So uh, please ask your teachers, bug them, get them to submit your applications. We will be- uh, uh, and While you're talking about teacher recommendation, Anand, I wanted to add that we never ding applicants for a missing recommendation because we realize that's outside their control. Yes. But please do try to get your application, your teacher recommendation in. It does help in the application process. We will uh, send out the first round of admission offers on the 28th. And then there is a waitlist process as well. And we'll be going back and forth and try to um, get you situated in a project if there's space available. Um, uh, I'm going to so answer two questions. One of them is, uh, what happens is after the initial round of offers on, the, on April 28th, there's continued admission on a rolling basis for two reasons. Some of the people we make offers to in the initial round turn us down. Those spots become available again. Second reason is as more projects continue to come in through the month of April and even uh, through the month of May, new spots become available that we fill from our wait list. And so that's why admissions, there's a big burst on um, April 28th, but then there's sort of a continued roll beyond that. Uh, this is to answer uh, Heyman's question. Uh, yeah. Nisha, your question is, do we know once the teachers have submitted their recommendations, are people able to see that on their own application portal? I think the answer is yes. I don't actually think so. Oh, you don't think so? Okay. okay. No. Um, please feel free to reach out to your teachers. But yeah, students do not get an email when they're Teacher. We can see it on our end, yeah. but also, um, um, okay, sorry. And, and to confirm, added, yeah. a lot of students have been emailing the SIP email and asking us to check, and then we've been uh, confirming uh, that way, but yeah. Um, Arya of Kaushik has asked the question for the application, what time of achievement backgrounds are you looking for in terms of academics? Um, that's a great question, Aryav. Uh, let me see if I can answer that. There's actually back-to-back, -back, there's a few questions. Uh, um, and I'll, Adam, I'll get to your question. Ariel, I'll get to your question. Um, Heyman, uh, one um, teacher recommendation only. That's all we're. Um, um, that's all we um, ask for. That's all we accept. Um, okay. So um, we expect to get close to three thousand applications uh, this year. At least applications started. Uh, completed applications. It'll be lower than that. Last year we had close to 1,400 this year will be higher than that is the way it's shaping up. Uh, completed applications is what matters. Those are the only ones we review. Um, okay, Ariyev's question. What type of achievements background are you looking for in terms of academics? Um, we don't pay a lot of attention to GPA. It's the short answer. We ask for a GPA, but we don't pay a lot of attention to it. What we believe is uh, the research you'll do in SIP is really far beyond things you learn in a classroom. Very far beyond what you learn in a classroom. So you'll be doing a lot of learning on the job. So in your essays, 
um, we want to hear about why you're interested in certain subjects. Uh, there are two subject essays, up to two subject essays that you'll write. And to answer your question, Adam, you're not writing about specific projects. You're writing about specific subjects. If you're interested in a subject, write about that subject, even if no projects are posted there. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're interested in why you're interested in those subjects. That's your um, 250 word essays. And then for your 500 word essay about yourself, we want to understand you, why you're interested in open-ended research. Um, this is what we want to learn about you and your, uh, why you're interested in research. Um, not so much about achievements, but more about background, your journey. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, okay. Um, all right, uh, Rachel, I'm, uh, let me, I'm reading your question. Also, can we just maybe answer the questions in the chat and I can just go through the application? Um, After the sorry, question. what was that on and say that again? Should I go through the application? And yes, please continue? start. I just want to say to Rachel, very important. There's no problem with the schedule you've outlined, right? And I, I, I'm, uh, I, uh, I, sorry for the poor health that you described in your message, but June twelfth, the week of June twelfth and the week of June nineteenth are online research prep weeks that are optional. Again, week of June twelfth, week of June nineteenth, and this is uh, something Anand will go through. They are optional weeks for students to prepare for research. So I don't see any conflict with your travel plans. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you wrote that already. Yes. You can find all the recordings on our YouTube channel, which can be found on the main website, New Past Sessions on YouTube. And here we go. Last week's session, the week before last week's session, the week before last week's before last. I'm just putting it on. But yes, you can see. Um, we've done sessions every Wednesday in February and um, March as well. And we have one more to go last next Wednesday. We started on February 8th, not February 1st. So all but the first Wednesday in February. All but the first. Yes. Okay. So let's get into the intern application. To apply, you would want to click this button right on the home page. So this is the 2023 application portal. You can apply to for admission to SIP 2023, but make sure to submit your application by 5 p.m. PST on March 31st, 2023. And then again, application decisions will be emailed out to applicants on April 28th, 2023. There are two buttons, apply here, payment portal. So the application steps, step one, complete the application for admission. This is, you, you would do this by clicking the apply here button. If you have applied in previous years and are using the same email address, the application system may recognize your email address. If you do not recall the password you've used before, you will need to use the forget password function to reset your password. So let's get into that. Let's apply here. Now, this is through RegPack. This is the system that we have our application on. Um, we will create an account. This is the first step. So I will put in my information and it's not going to be 100 accurate for um demonstration purposes but please make sure to have your information be accurate Wonderful. So that was the password I used last week. So let's do another one. Do I have enough emails? Yeah, and these test applications that you're starting, I assume uh, we can later move them to yes. inactive, right? Okay. Um, I see. think I'm all out of emails to use. You can use mine. All right. Perfect. 
Uh, oh, we've used well, yours too. <laughs> I think try my other one. Okay. Absolutely. Care, Ojas. Thank you. Ojas, were you a SIP participant in years past? I recognize your name. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're excited to have you back for SIP 2023. Make sure you finish your application. Lindsay Lover, may I use your email address? Yes, please. I think Lindsay's already used us for test after. Really? Yeah, it might be already used, but you can try it out. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Okay. That's how you know we've had a lot of sessions because no one's email works anymore. Okay. <laughs> this is part one of the application. Red circles note mandatory fields. Use the prog progress bar above to track your progress. So there are four parts. And if you opt into filling out the financial aid information, there will be a fifth part added. But Again, four parts is the application. For each part, you must fill out the required answer fields and click save the save button at the bottom of the page to uh, save your answers. You may return to the parts previously at any time prior to March 31, 2023. So even if you click submit today, you can log in and change anything uh, up till the March 31st at 5 p.m. deadline. So for more information, uh, here's the website, here's the FAQs, intern FAQs, and then more FAQs. So please email us at our website, at our email, if you have any questions and for any uh, any confirmations or anything afterwards. So let's fill out the information. First name, last name. I am located in the United States, street address. City. California. I will put email. Your school information. Is your high school located in the United States? Yes. Current high school. The Leha. Did I spell that correctly? Two L's? No. Okay. Street address. That's right. Two, two L's, one J. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Hasty. <laughs> uh, state. I can, I can tell you it's not on Sesame Street. It's 1310 Bryant Street. Wow, Raja. You have that down by memory. What's the zip code? I'm an alumni parent, yeah. What is What's the zip, the code? zip code? What is the zip code? I better look that up. I don't remember. You don't remember the zip code? Okay. If you are located in California and have a CAS ID, please um, write that down. If this doesn't apply to you, um, please enter NA. Current high school grade level has a spring in 2023. I'm about to graduate middle school. I'm going to be a rising freshman. I'm very excited. Date of birth, two, two. That's me. Does your parent, now we will be entering parent and guardian information. Does your parent, number one, live in the United States? Yes. John Smith. Address, city, state. For demonstration purposes, we will not be adding the second parent's information, demographic data, gender identity, personal pronouns, ethnicity. Plan to attend college or university. Will you be the first in your family to do so? Yes. If you are affiliated with any of our partner programs, please select your partner program here. Uh, we will confirm those this with the affiliate. And then um, this is our list of all our partner programs. So I will find Castileja School. There you go. Are you a returning SIP student? I am not, but Ojas, you would have selected yes here. Have any of your siblings participated in SIP? No, they haven't. How did you hear about SIP? 
I learned it from the SIP website. SIP strives to provide complete financial support for admitted interns so that no one is faced with opting out of the SIP opportunity due to financial constraints. Interns who qualify for financial aid will be granted a financial aid package covering 25, 50, 75, or 100 percent of their program fees and any transportation, room, and board expenses for attending the program. Interns with the most need will be considered uh, for a stipend to offset hidden costs of attendance, such as giving up work hours to support their family in order to attend SIP. If you will be applying for need-based financial aid, click yes here and a financial aid form will be added to your application. So we will be, I will be applying for financial aid. If you need assistance covering the $60 SIP application fee, please email us at ucsc-sip at ucsc.edu with a couple sentences of explanation of your need for an application fee waiver. And a discount coupon code will be sent for you to use in the UCSC IRIS SIP application fee payment portal, which we will talk about next. So this um, can confirm. I pause for a, a moment to answer a couple of questions? Okay. Absolutely. So you answered Absolutely. the question about fee waiver. Yes. Um, whether one question is whether students are allowed to submit the research they did to a science competition. That's a discussion between the SIP interns and their mentor. It varies, and the mentors are often not able to predict right now. Some have said, no, you can't at the outset. Some have said, yes, you can. But it really depends on how the research progresses. Um, you know, this is real research, unpublished research. It's part of the mentor's PhD thesis. So we want to be protective of that. We, we don't want them to get scooped by their competition if something that's not completely ready is, uh, is advertised too far in advance. So this is really a conversation with um, between interns and their mentor. In some cases, the mentors have said, no, the research is not um, you know, not eligible for this competition. In some cases, they've said that. Um, and um, uh, it, in those cases, we have, have to respect the mentor's wishes. This is really the, the mentor's research project that you are being given access to. Um, and does that answer your question, uh, Hemant? Uh, Rachel, it's a great question. Um, we have not ever had a partnership with um, in College Park High School in Pleasant Hill. Um, so uh, we have set up partnership with schools that are local to Santa Cruz, close to Santa Cruz, schools that are far away. We would be happy to do that. Um, the way we would set this up is, it's really is a conversation. There's nothing formal, but we want to create transparency around this. We want you, you the teachers and counselors of the school to know what SIP offers and what it doesn't offer. You know, we talked about offers immersion in a process, doesn't uh, offer a product or um, discovery at the end. It offers, you know, we expect students to be fully engaged and not be doing other things over the summer. This is really a full-time internship. Um, so we want to build this expectation transparency around that. We have a conversation with the school. Uh, we can do this by Zoom. We can do this by visiting in person. And that's really um, what we offer is as much transparency as possible about our program. What you offer as a school is help us select students because I think it's beneficial to all if people who really know students by seeing them day in, day out, uh, for years at a time, if they recommend students to us, that's it's a much fairer uh, basis for selection of uh, of SIP interns. So that that's really what these partnerships entail. That was a long answer question. A great answer. Okay, so we will save and continue to part two of the application. Part two: academic record ac record and reference. So in this section, you will be asked about your grades and the contact information for the reference you have asked to submit a letter of recommendation on your behalf. Again, only one letter of recommendation. Um, please upload your unofficial transcript or grade report in the space provided. Um, we'll get right into that. So GPA and transcript, please enter your most recently available GPA. We will confirm this with your transcript, but for this purpose, 4.0, upload your unofficial transcript or some aspect of grades here um, for this purpose. We'll just put this. Um, academic reference. 
please enter the contact information for your reference here. Your reference will be sent instructions to complete the sick recommendation form and will have the option to upload a letter on of their own. All intern applica applicants will receive a notification after the recommendation has been submitted by the reference. Okay, that answers the question. That is good to know. So for our reference, we'll put Mr. Smith of the John Smiths of the world. Um, so I can send the recommendation form to the reference now. Um, clicking yes will trigger an email message right now. The email will contain instructions. Okay. That is part two. On to part three. Part three, schedule, skills, and essay. So this section requires information about your availability this summer and personal statements about your interest in STEM, STEAM, or social sciences research. This is where we get to learn all about you. It is best to draft your short essay responses separately and then copy them, copy and paste them into the response spaces in the form. Sometimes RegPack will time out. And also if you wanna go back and forth and edit and have other people look at your essays, so please um, either on Microsoft Word, Google Docs or whatever other uh, uh, software you would like to use. So let's get into availability, scheduling and notes. During the research prep weeks of June 12th to June 23rd, all interns will be self-directed with varying schedules depending on their projects and completing activities such as online Python and research tutorials and background readings. All interns are strongly encouraged to attend the hybrid program kickoff. This is um, the kickoff that will take place on Sunday, June 25th, 2023 and vitally important presentation day, which will conclude SIP on Saturday, August 19th, 2023. Scheduling notes, interns will be off both on June 19th in observance, in observance of, June, of the Juneteenth holiday and on Tuesday, July 4th in observance of US Independence Day. So please indicate your plans below as they are currently known. And this isn't, you don't have to stick to this. If things change, just please let us know. Have your, have the interns communicate that with the mentors ahead of time. Um, as are currently known for the eight week active research segment of the program from Monday, June 26th through Friday, August 8th. On means available and planning to participate in the internship. Off means unavailable and not able to participate in the internship. If you plan to work remotely on any given week, whether you are online or in person, please select remote. So that would mean you are online, you will be participating, but you will just be uh, remote. Um, so please indicate your primary modality preference in the first question of this section. Um, knowing your availability will be helpful as we place interns in projects. Please note that there's a six week attendance requirement for the eight week active research segment of the program, so six out of the eight weeks. And yes, please indicate your primary modality preference, 100% online, in-person, or hybrid. So if you want to be 100% online and remote, you will not be on campus at all. This is your option. I plan to participate in person and on campus. This is if you want to be 100% on campus. And I plan to participate hybrid on campus on online. So this is um, when you have the flexibility and you are checking yes, both remotely and on campus. So I will do on campus and online. Awesome. So let's get into this real quick. I'll answer that question through here. So the first week of SIP, I want to be there online. I want to be there in person. So I'll be on uh, again. Actually, for the second week, it's the 4th of July uh, holiday. So I'll be doing that from home. I'll leave back in person, week three, week four. I will be on uh, week five, be on, week six, be on. So again, some schools start back up before August 19th. Remote should be okay for these last few weeks, 100%. So communicate the date that the school your school will start with the mentors. And the last week of SIP is more of a presentation practice week where students are concluding their research and getting their presentations ready and this is a less intensive week and um, if schools are back in session then we can prioritize times after school hours so this will be remote and again last week if school starts earlier that will be remote 
skills. So the second part of this application, specify any skills and experience you already have. So this is, let's say, if you have computer programming experience, um, being skilled in computer programming means that you are comfortable writing programs. So you can write, you can speak more to what computer programming experience you have here. If you have lab work experience or statistical data analysis, please um, select that. Um, please specify any skills you would like to acquire, improve through SIP. So I would like to get better at my computer programming. I would like to get better at statistical data analysis. And here, is there any additional information you would like for us to have about your skills you possess? This would be a great place to um, write about your skills and explain them more in detail. So now we get to the short essays. These, we ask for interns to select two areas of their research interests and then write two short essays why they would like to uh, be in a research project under that subject area. So for the first option, I'm interested in electrical engineering. And I would, in a short essay of 200 words, explain why I'm interested in electrical engineering. So for the demonstration purpose, I'll just put test. And my second area that I'm interested in would be physics test. And if you would like to, you do not have to write an additional essay, but if you would like to pick an additional third option of a subject that you are interested in, I will select anthropology. And, and then you the could, last- uh, You could pick more than one, right? Uh, for your, I mean, you could pick third, fourth, fifth. Is that right? Yep. You, you can. can? Pick, yep, yep. You can pick a, any number. I did not know that. But sort of I'm that's always... your third tier, if you like. Not third subject, but third tier. Raja, how would, what if someone selects all of them? Gives them a greater chance of getting in, certainly, but they should only do that if they would truly accept a project in yeah. any of those. Yeah. Stop it. And that, stop is it. Not, that is not a way to game the system. When That's we are not. placing uh, students in projects, we will, before 100% placing you in there, we will ask, would you like to take part in this project under the no. what we, the project we, will be doing? Yeah, we typically go by primary and secondary, right? We yeah. rarely get yeah. down to the third tier, yeah. But, but yeah. This is good for the record. Bethany, if we pick the ones after two, do we write essays after them also? to no. we? Okay. You don't write essays. You only write essays about your top two subjects. And remember, if those two essays are about your interest in the subject yeah. rather than your interest in doing open-ended research. Your interest in doing open-ended research is part of your personal essay, your personal statement. Lawrence, that's yeah. kind of up to the student. Um, yeah, it's the personal. maximum is 200 but feel free to write as little or as much to the 200 point word limit as possible. And that leads into the personal statement. So here you do have a little bit more. So you would wanna be uh, get into more detail here, but this is the longer personal statement. As a SIP intern, you will be conducting and contributing to cutting edge research. This process is inherently fraught with challenges that may ultimately lead to null results. What do you hope to gain by participating in research if selected as a SIP intern? What experiences, skills, and or resources do you have to overcome these political challenges? Maximum 500 words. So take your time, do your best. Please um, fill, out these application, uh, fill out these essays and we'll go from there. I think it's very important to be yourself. We mm -hmm. want to hear your voice, not somebody else's. We want to hear your voice. Be true to yourself in these essays. That's the best advice we can give you. That's the advice we give students all the time. Be yourself. This is for anything. Yeah. When you're applying, show them, show, show the reviewers who you really are. Not, not who you want to be or who you would rather be, but who you actually are. Yes. Part four, certification. I'm reading your question, Bethany. I understand that the shorter essays are about subjects and not projects, but can you reiterate whether we should steer away from certain subjects if the projects posted on the website require prerequisites we cannot meet? Yeah, that's really a good, good idea. Yeah. So we have projects that are tuned. Some might be more, um, some might require, might be more advanced and it would be helpful to have experience in the skills necessary for that project, but there are projects that are uh, more 
open to all and you will develop the, the skills needed throughout the research. Awesome, okay. So part four, this is just certifying everything in this application. Um, submitting this form indicates that your application is complete and this form will lock when submitted. You can go back in if you want to change it. It changed anything, but everything will be closed off for good on March 31st, 2023 at 5 p.m. So let's get into this. Application is not complete, complete until this form is submitted. Um, please look at the FAQs one more time. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Your e-signature here indicates that SIP has permission to review your unofficial transcripts, your application, and all data contained here, and your recommendations to make a determination on your suitability to the SIP program. So yes, my application and my essays are my own work, as we all saw. Uh, I have reviewed the SIP intern FAQs. I actually haven't, but this is a good check to make sure that you read um, the FAQs for SIP. Um, SIP has permission to review all my application materials and data. Yes, I understand that all application materials must be received by March 31st. I agree to the above. I am ready to submit my application. One more time, accept. Woohoo! So, if you hadn't selected the financial aid application, you would have been completely done. So, congratulations. But if you have um, selected the financial aid application, let's finish the last part. So, again, we strive to provide complete financial support. Please complete this section uh, to the best of your ability. On this form, you must upload a copy of your 2022 federal tax forms. And if you don't have access to those, please use 2021 or something. If you are an international student and don't have these forms, please um, provide, submit whatever form is used in your region for proof of income and reporting income. So again, more links to answers or online resources. So financial aid application, again, same time. What is the gross adjusted gross income of my household? I was a single parent household. We'll put 65,000. What is the size? It is John Smith and I. If you feel you have any extenuating circumstances that increase your need for financial aid, please write about that here. And then please upload your 2022 tax form or some similar document here. And it's that simple. Woohoo. Submit. We are done. As you can see, the dashboard is 100% complete. The five parts, part one, part two, part three, part four, and financial aid application. So at this point, you could give yourself a pat on the back. You're halfway there, more than halfway there. So the last part, part two, pay the application fee. Access the IRIS payment portal by clicking the payment portal button above to, play, to pay the $60 application fee. Um, please note that your application will not be read if you do not pay the application fee. But uh, we would like to note that the payment portal is a separate system for the application portal. In order to use the payment portal, you will need to create a separate account, but please do use the same email and same password. Let's say you're an intern and you use your intern information parents, please use the same information. You don't have to use your own personal account. Um, Simply register again using the same credentials, using the same email address in both systems will make it easier for us to match your accounts. And if you have applied in previous years, the system may recognize your email address. Please, um, if you do not recall your password, click forgot pa password and go from there. A non-refundable application fee of $60 is required for your application to be considered. If you need financial aid, please uh, email the SIP 2023 SIP email address and we'll go from there. So let us go through paying for uh, our $60 application fee. I will use the same email. Actually, I do not have an account, right? So I have to sign up. I will use the same email address. Bethany, the short answer is yes. We should get the application finished and the payment finished by the application deadline. Thanks, Eleanor. That's very good. 
I don't know, it's one of our returning interns. And I'm sorry, I said 250 words. It's 200 words for the subject essays. 200. So that our account has been created. You will have gotten an email. Let's sign in. Hooray, we are in. So this is the IRS registration form. Please fill out the required uh, fields. Please save your login credentials you've created because you will need to log in again to pay the um, the deposit and full tuition fees. So for any questions, please email us. For technical questions, please contact conference at ucsc.edu. Let's fill out some information. Applicant first name, applicant last name, high school. Um, email. Next. Okay. So we will put a billing address. This is for payment. State is not required. Interesting. Country. Okay. And now we are at the registration review. So this is where you'll see your information and your billing address. What is in our shopping cart? The item is a $60 application fee. If you have emailed the SIP, um, email and have requested financial aid. This is where you would input your uh, fee waiver. And once you hit apply, this will automatically negate the item in your shopping cart and you'll see a total of zero. So you are good to go. So on this point, you would continue to check out and pay. But for this demonstration, we will not be inputting my payment information. So we are good to go here. But again, application is part one and then paying your $60 application fee is part two. Please follow up with your teacher reference. It's good that we check that you will receive an email once you once your teacher has submitted, so you would know. But if you would like to check, please email us and uh, ask your teacher. But yes, that has been the application workshop. We can finish the session by any uh, doing a, another Q&A session. So if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask, please feel free to unmute or just continue asking in the chat. Rachel, yes, it's only the $60 application fee, nothing else. Yes. And we do offer uh, waivers of that if, if, if the $60 will present an obstacle. Yes. We have nine more days to go. Please start your application. Please finish your application. Um, and we're almost there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so, Hemant, the process of um, uh, of setting up a partnership is informal. It's Thank not a you, formal Eleanor. partnership. Um, we set up a conversation with um, the school teachers, staff, you know, counselors, sometimes the principal, the school staff, and the SIP staff. Uh, have a conversation to create transparency around what the program is, what kind of students we're looking for, and the student uh, the teachers help uh, help to um, uh, your teacher. The school agrees to help us with uh, you know fair selection of applicants. Um, Jeet, we answered the question already, but the main selection is really based on student essays and recommendations. We're looking for students who have a high uh, degree of social maturity, so they are they can navigate an open-ended research project, and they are um, you know good balanced perspective about open-ended research and things like that. That's what we're looking for: passion in a subject. We're looking for someone who really wants to do this uh, program. So wonderful. All right. Thanks for thanks. Thank you everyone for joining. I mean, uh, we yes. we can. 
certainly continue to answer questions for the next few minutes. Uh, Anu here Anu had to leave uh, Anand, but uh, she wrote a message and hopefully she'll get in touch with us by so yes. email. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for taking time off in oh, the middle of the work. People's day. lunch hours. Thank you for joining us for your. I hope here. we gave you some food for thought. Oh, wow! Wow! Yes, absolutely. Oh, thanks. Awesome! Awesome! Okay. Thank you. Final call for questions. Just to put that out there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. A lot of great questions today. Lots of very, very good questions. I think people, um, this, this reflects strong interest in the, in the program, the questions do. Yes. Eleanor, thanks for answering questions of 2020. Absolutely. Please email us. Yeah, yes. Uh, Sophia. You know, slight advantage, but not a huge advantage. So, uh, you, um, Sophia, please email. That's better than phone call, probably, just because we have a group email that uh, a few of us can monitor. Uh, there you go. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, I think a partner, students from partner organization get a slight, um, you know, there's greater transparency around who the student is. So we have a better sense of who the student is. And uh, schools tend to put forward students who they feel would be a good fit to the program. So there's a great, uh, there tends to be a better match when a student is coming through a partner organization. That's why uh, there's an advantage. Basically, the extra work that the school puts in to understand what our program is and help select students that are a good fit for the program ultimately benefits the students. But it is certainly the case that every year, many students are admitted to the program who are not from partner schools and vice versa. Every Absolutely. year, there are, there are schools from there are student applicants from partner schools who we can't make a spot for. Yeah, partner schools yes, do not we, have. We do right. have we do have partnerships with public schools in San Jose. Uh, a few of them, um, Yerba Buena High School is one of them, um, and we have a few other partnerships. Downtown College Prep is a Alum Rock, um, DCP Alum Rock, DCP El Primero. Missions. They're both they're, they're both charter oh. schools. Yeah. Um, we don't have a partnership with Mission San Jose. Not a, we've never really had a formal partnership with them, although we have a lot of applicants from there. Um, we have partnership with some public school. It's a very, partnership is a very- or, Is Evergreen in San Jose? Evergreen is in San Jose. We've had many students from there. We've yeah. never set up a, I mean, these partnerships are never formal. Let me yeah. make that clear. These partnerships are informal, but even there, uh, we uh, evergreen there was had there's been a lot of students applying from there many many schools uh, uh, have had multiple students apply to us from there so we know um, uh, I mean the students from those schools know a lot about SIP just by virtue of the fact that there been many other students have come through the program so that's always good it creates transparency again that's what we're looking for transparency around the application process so and review process so um, yeah, so the only way to get, there are multiple ways to gain transparency about SIP. One is through formal partnerships, but other, the other kind that happens very naturally is when many students come to our program, they tell their friends about what the program was like, what we did and didn't offer, and that creates transparency. Really? Okay. It is about to turn one, about to be one o'clock. I will stop the recording. Thank you everybody for coming. Please check.